heart and receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, the power of the Holy Spirit will come into you. When he spoke the name of Jesus, he was speaking the end result. He said, be made whole. Hi, I'm Reverend Victoria Fury. Welcome to Times of Refreshing. I'm so glad that you joined me today. And you're going to hear messages on this broadcast about the message of Jesus Christ, His Holy Gospel, the Gospel of the Kingdom, the message of His cross, the message of His death, His burial, His resurrection, and our soon coming Lord and King. Hallelujah! I'd like for you to go to Acts chapter 3, verse 19. We're continuing on the message of repentance and remission of sin and times of refreshing. Hallelujah. So glad that you joined me today. Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. The word repent in the Greek means to think differently, to reconsider. And there's also a Hebrew word for repentance which means to burn or set on fire, to desolate, to kindle. There's another word for repentance in the Greek, means a reversal of another. It says in Romans chapter 2 verse 4 that the goodness of God leads us to repentance. The goodness of God. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. It says in Romans 7, verse 9 to 10, that godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. The sorrow of the world worketh death, but godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. That means salvation brings the deliverance inside of you by receiving the Savior. Hallelujah. A person can say, well, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, they can say, I'm sorry to God, but that's not repentance. Repentance is turning from sin and turning to the Savior that wiped away all of our sin. That's a, he gave the commission to his apostles, preach repentance and remission of sins to all the nations. And he said, you go into Jerusalem and you're going to be endued or clothed with the power from on high. So repentance is a doctrine that Jesus established as a doctrine of the apostles' doctrine, repentance towards God and faith in Jesus Christ. A person can't put their faith in Jesus Christ until they repent of their sin. That's an about face that's coming back to the Lord with all of your heart, being converted, in, converted to Christ in your soul and your spirit, receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There's only one way to God, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No man can come to the Father but through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. There's no other mediator but one person, Jesus Christ. 
He's the one that gave his life a holy sacrifice for you. He laid his body on that cross. He laid it freely upon the cross. He says, I lay my life down and I take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. Jesus took the judgment. He took your condemnation. He took your shame and your pain. He took everything upon himself, all iniquity. All the sins of the world were laid upon him. And he shed innocent blood, holy blood, was not tainted with sin. Jesus was the holy lamb that gave his life for you, who justified you in his holy blood to declare you righteous in him. The Bible says that if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You're saved because of the justifying blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The word refreshing means recovery of breath and revival. Jesus came to bring the refreshing presence of God into your life. He paid a big sacrifice for every human being upon the earth. He paid a holy sacrifice for every soul upon the earth. It says, all the souls are mine, but the soul that sinneth it shall die. He didn't call the righteous to repentance. He called sinners to repentance. That's turning away from sin and turning to Jesus Christ the Savior. He is the one that gives you eternal life. He is the one that is life. He's life and living. Hallelujah. He's the one that restores you unto God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now we ministered last week in Acts chapter 3 on Peter and John. How they went to the gate beautiful and the lame man got totally healed and restored. It was faith in the name of Jesus that made him completely whole. And we learned a couple weeks ago about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, the name of Jesus. His name means in the Hebrew, revive. See, he's the reviver of your heart. He brings the refreshing presence of God into your life. His name means keep alive, to nourish, to recover, to quicken, to repair, and to restore, revive, surely to be made whole. So when Peter and John begin to say, silver and gold have we none. But such as we have, we give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. There's power in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that his name is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in the heaven, earth, and under the earth, and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. All power has been given unto Jesus in the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. His name is above cancer. His name is above disease. His name is above every name. Glory to God. That man was lame from his mother's womb, but the name of Jesus was spoken over his life and put strength into his ankle bones. The power of the Holy Spirit came into those ankle bones and that man was made whole. And it was faith in the name of Jesus that made him whole. It wasn't by their own power holiness that made him whole. It was faith in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. That's the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Before we go into Acts chapter 4, I'd like to go to Mark. Chapter, I think it's Mark chapter 1. Let me look here.
Yes, Mark chapter 1. Jesus brought revival to Simon's house. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jesus, in Mark chapter 1, verse 14, now when John, that's John the Baptist, was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Now gospel means glad tidings, then good news. And saying, the time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus himself said to repent. That means turn an about face and believe the good news. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing what? Good. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. God was with him in the person of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Everything Jesus did, he did by the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when you see me, you're seeing my Father. The demonstration of the kingdom of God was coming forth with the power of the Holy Ghost, delivering people's lives. Glory to God. Jesus began to call those that had been chosen to be apostles. And then he went to Capernaum. Go to uh, Mark 121. They went into Capernaum, and it was on the Sabbath day. They entered into the synagogue, and Jesus taught. And they were all astonished at him, because his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. The authority was given to him by his father. And them was in their synagogue, and there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. See, the devil knew that Jesus was the Holy One of God. He was terrified. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Notice, the devil was in people. He was taking possession of people, speaking out of their mouth. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. See, authority makes a command. He was anointed by God. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man. The Son of Man, he was anointed by God. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed insomuch that they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they shall obey him. And they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout the region round about Galilee. Jesus said in John chapter 7, verse 16, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. And if any man will do his doctrine, he'll know that it's been come from God. But if he teaches of his own, he seeks his own glory. Let's go to John chapter 7, verse 16. I want you to turn there. John chapter 7, verse 16. Jesus said to the Jewish people, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. 
He that speaks him, speaketh of himself seeks his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Jesus came with the doctrine of his Father. His doctrine had authority. His doctrine had a command to the devil, and the devil came out. His doctrine brought healing and restoration and recovery to the people. The Bible says that when he began to teach and preach, people began to get healed of their sicknesses and diseases. They heard what he was saying, and there was a power demonstration in his life. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 1, verse 30, But Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and he came and he took her by the hand, and he lifted her up, and immediately, immediately the fever left her. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. And she began to minister unto them. And at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased, and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. That's revival. When a whole city is gathered together at the door at Simon's house, the power of God came, and he healed many that were sick of divers' diseases, cast out many devils, suffered not the devils to speak, because they knew him. They knew him. The Bible says in verse 39 of Mark chapter 1, verse 39, that Jesus preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Jesus was casting out devils every single day. And the Bible says in, in Luke chapter 10, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and upon scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing, nothing shall hurt you. The devil will not hurt you. When Jesus comes into you, the Word of God says that He did not give you a spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. A sound mind is sobriety. It becomes sound by the Word of God. The Bible says to meditate in His Word day and night. You will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, producing fruit in due season. Your leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever you do will begin to prosper. Jesus said, Abide in me, I in you, the same will bring forth much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Without Jesus you can do nothing. Without his Holy Spirit you cannot accomplish anything. You can't heal a person. You can't raise a person from the dead. The only person that can raise him from the dead is Jesus. The only person that can heal him is Jesus. But Jesus said, Abide in me, and I in you. So the Holy Spirit gives witness of Jesus' resurrection. And when you go in the power of the name of Jesus, the authority that's invested in the name of Jesus, people will begin to get healed. The Bible says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And they shall speak in a new tongue. Hallelujah. Glory to God. These signs shall follow those that believe. Those that believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. Those that have received the Savior as Lord and Savior. Those that have received his precious Holy Spirit, the wonderful promise of the Father, the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is the miracle worker. He is the power of Almighty God. 
Hallelujah. The power of God was demonstrated in the life of Jesus Christ. It was demonstrated in his apostles. It's being demonstrated even today upon those that believe and follow him. Glory to God. When we preached last week on Acts chapter 3 of the man of Gate Beautiful that got healed, Peter and John were persecuted because they preached Jesus Christ's resurrection. The Bible says that great grace was upon the early church because they began to preach the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not a sugar-coated gospel. His gospel is a gospel of repentance, remission of sins, and times of refreshing from the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Acts chapter 4. They begin to get persecuted from the elders and the scribes. And in verse 7, it says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed that was done to this man, by what means he is made whole, be it known unto you all. And to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. See, there is a change when you've been with Jesus. A true believer, a true believer that lives for the Lord Jesus Christ, loves being in the presence of Almighty God. They love seeking His face. They have a desire in their heart to do His will. They have a desire in their heart to be changed. The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. The fear of the Lord is to turn away from that which is evil and iniquity and is to turn to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They love being in the presence of God. See, Peter and John were in the hour of prayer. They were praising and worshiping God and giving Him glory. And through that hour of prayer, they came into that temple. And that's when the power of the name of Jesus came out of Peter's lips to that lame man. He was made whole. They were in the presence of God in prayer and from the being in the presence of God in prayer, the power of the Holy Ghost came on the scene. That anointing that was on Peter and John came upon that lame man, and the power of the name of Jesus healed him. Hallelujah. It's power in his name. Glory to God. Then in verse 16, they said, Indeed, a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. They couldn't deny it.
But they said, if it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in the name. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. That's persecution. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This man that was healed was 40 years of age. A notable miracle took place, a miracle of healing. You may have an incurable disease today. You may be bedridden. You may be in the hospital and had an injury. It's power in the name of Jesus. It's power in His name. He's the one that came to heal you. By His stripes upon His back, the Bible says you were healed. The Bible says call upon His name, He'll answer you. He'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Jesus is your healer. I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for every person viewing. I thank you, Father, for the authority in your word, the authority in the name of Jesus, that your word's exalted above your name, your name's above every name. I thank you, Jesus, right now for healing people's bodies restoring them and making them whole. I thank you, Heavenly Father. There is a person out there right now. You've had a terrible injury to your leg. It's caused great distress upon you emotionally and physically. The Lord is reaching into your room right now and healing your leg. And you're going to give Him all the glory. I feel the presence of Almighty God right now. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your restorer. Jesus is the one that's making you whole today. God bless you. If you would like to support Times of Refreshing, please make donations to Victory Christian Church, care of Times of Refreshing at 112 Pine Street, West Union, Iowa, 52175. If you would like to buy a DVD of this program, please send $10 to KFXB TV, 744 Main Street, Dubuque, Iowa, 52001. Please be sure to include the episode number on the screen.